Welcome to Always More Nerd, where we take a break from the infinite possibilities to talk about the news, reviews, and previews of all things comic books, sci-fi, fantasy, and anything deemed nerdy. Today on the pod, we are talking about the review of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, current Last of Us thoughts, the future of DC Entertainment, Guardians, Heartbreak, Michael Keaton, and so much more. But first, I'm your host, Tim Lickie, and sitting next to me is the man who still has not watched The Last of Us, and that is Jordan Bailey. Why is my intro always something that still hasn't watched blank? <laughs> Every single time. Between you and Chris, you're the only ones that are always behind on this shit. Every time. I just gotta start Every watching time. stuff. I don't I'm and, man. and joining us from somewhere up north, I, I, I'm i just done asking because it's always cold and I don't, yeah, I don't want to deal with that. That is Justin. Hello, sir. Yeah, we're in uh, Detroit today. Yeah, so, don't go here. It's, yeah, not, it's what, not fun. What is the temperature today? Uh, It was like 40 when I left work. Not bad. Uh, it's 39 okay. right now. Okay, well, that's, not, that's not horrible. It's cold, though. Yeah, it's cold, but it's not like, yeah. you know. That's what we get. Tax like weeks. Yeah, we get that for like Y'all a week. week. <laughs> It's not. It's not going to kill you when They'll you step cancel outside. school. They'll cancel school down here for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got we got fourteen inches of snow, and they were like, "Well, mm, life goes it's on." Not early enough. You can go to school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it really like, like my dad grew up in Iowa, so he literally like gave me all those stories. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I walked to school, and you know, twenty five yeah. inches of snow <laughs> and uphill. And it's the voice. <laughs> it's the voice change for me. <laughs> Oh, no, really? but for real, like, well, if, hey, if the, if the roads are drivable, school doesn't close. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We had a uh, ice last week, though, and like I didn't go to work. Kids didn't go to school. So. All right. Well, you guys ready to go to break the glass here and get, get on in? It. Yes, sir. All right, guys, we got some stuff to talk about. Let's talk about some news. Cool. All right. Yeah, see, I'll try a little yeah, something new. It's season it three. You know? Every time. Every time. <laughs> new sound effects. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, guys, this is a big one. This is probably going to take a good chunk of our time, but that's okay. Because yeah. okay. it's something that we've been complaining yeah. about for a long uh-huh. time, and that is the DC Universe. Yeah. DC Suckiverse. Um, so in January, James Gunn, co CEO of the DC Comics film, they actually have a title for that now. Like, is it? It's not DCEU anymore. It's a. I think it's just DCU. There's DCU? a name for that it. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, DCU. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's James Gunn, and is it Peter? Uh, I don't know the other guy. Saffron, Saffron, something along those lines. The other something guy. like that. Yeah, but he's less important. Yeah, <laughs> he's the money basically, and James is more the creative. Yeah, from he's from what I understand, for everything. Um, nah, he he's he's still still got brains in there too. Um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So they they released the highly anticipated future plans of the DC universe. Um, all right. So first thing to note off is that it seems like basically film, TV, and animation will all share a common universe. In other words, they'll be able to interlink at any time. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like if what if we're able to interlink with the MCU, and it, they could they could bring in characters in animation and bring them into live action and vice versa. Um, which is interesting and cool. kind of cool. And I'm mm-hmm. wondering how they're going to do that like long term, especially once you get these big name actors, will they try to get them to voice animation or will they try to get just sound alikes? Mm. Or AI could just do the I, whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, I think it's probably going to be a little bit of both. Like what we saw with uh, What If, it's like we didn't have um, certain actors, but we had others, you know. Uh, um, I think it's good. I like the idea. I like the uniformity. Um, There's a lot of potential here. And James Gunn has experience working with weird ideas that have a lot of potential. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Between (laughs) between Guardians, who no one heard of before, Mm -hmm. really, that came out in Suicide Squad. It's yeah. He knows how to work with, and you, we'll see in a, in a second here. He likes to bring in these unknown characters and teams, and um, it's gonna, it's going to get wild. Um, all right, so let's talk about what is going to be deemed as their first quote phase. They're calling it chapters. Uh, in this first chapter, chapter one is we called Gods and Monsters, and according to Gunn and Saffron, that's the name. Uh, chapter one is the first of two chapters that will convey a storyline over the course of eight to ten years. So they're 
they're planning it. Yeah. They're they're doing long term here. Um, this is a quote from James. A lot of people think it's going to be Marvel 2.0, and definitely I learned a lot of stuff at Marvel, and I think we have a lot of differences, Gunn explained. We are telling a big, huge, central story that is like Marvel, except for I think we're a lot more planned out than Marvel from the beginning because we've gotten a group of writers together to work that story out completely. We're also creating a universe that is like Star Wars, where there's different times, different places, different things, or Game of Thrones, where characters are a little bit more morally complex. Um, end quote. So some notable writers that he mentioned, uh, you got Tom King, who was working on, who's working on Supergirl. Uh, you got Drew Goddard, uh, who created the Netflix Daredevil series. Uh, Christina Hodson, Birds of Prey, Batgirl and the Flash. Uh, Crystal Henry, the Watchmen series, which, my God. And Jeremy Slater, who did Moon Knight. Um, so a lot of... I want to interject real quick. Yeah, please do. Tom, Tom King. Let me talk about Tom King for a minute. <laughs> right. Tom King is probably, like, top five favorite writers of all time. Really? He wrote... Um, he had a he had a vision series that was twelve issues. Probably one of the best things that Marvel Comics has put out in the last twenty years. Oh. I highly recommend it. Um, life changing. Also, at the same time, he also wrote the Omega Men, who oh. none of you have probably ever heard of. Uh, and for DC Comics, oh. and I think that was also about twelve issues. Excellent storyline um, involved Kyle Raynor, one of the Green Lanterns, who was not a Green Lantern at that point. Um, and his writing is just phenomenal. Like, I didn't know he was involved before just now, so I'm actually way more excited. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It, yeah. He Also, he used to be a CIA agent. Oh, yeah. Cool. No big deal. That makes <laughs> a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it, all these all these writers really just and the fact that he's planning eight to ten years, it really shows that yes, obviously they're gonna pick some good directors, but the writing, he knows that's gonna be very fundamental, especially going like starting off first. And if I'm not mistaken, he's gonna be writing Superman, yes, um, which we'll kind of get to in a second. Um, oh, well, let's get to it. So Gunn mm-hmm. and Saffron shared the ten titles for the first chapter. So you got five films, you got Superman Legacy. The Authority, The Brave and the Bold, which is focused around Damian Wayne. Uh, you got Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and Swamp Thing. Uh, five series, you got Creature Commandos, Waller, Booster Freaking Gold. <laughs> My home freaking their uh, interjection. Uh, Lanterns and Paradise Lost. Um, uh, quick note, Superman Legacy is slated for July 11th, to, uh, 2025, and is said to be the start of this new universe. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Gunn is going to be like the main uh, writer, writer for Superman. Is he di- he's not directing it, though, is he? No, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, so, what do we think about these films and series? Um, it sounds good. <laughs> Yes. It sounds good. That's all um, I'm going to say. I'm it sounds good. Go ahead, Jordan. No, it just it sounds good. I mean, I think it was cool. Um, I thought the video was cool, and it showed some of the comics and um, the inspo and what they're trying to go towards. Uh, it just sounds good, and I will be waiting till 2025 to see if it looks good. Yeah. So, we'll see. I'm excited to see the authority. Like, that is... That is basically the Guardians of the Galaxy of this yeah. new universe. So people are like, "Who?" Yeah, yeah. Who? <laughs> uh, they are they're uh, Wildstorm characters. Uh, so Midnighter is like kind of like a Batman knockoff, and uh, Apollo is kind of like a Superman knockoff. Um, they've since been integrated into uh, the DC universe, uh, but they are both fun characters. They're also a couple, kind of playing on the oh. Batman Superman dynamic. Um, very like good, gentle, super powerful Apollo, and very murderous, crazy person Midnighter. It's just uh such a such a fun dynamic. I'm really looking forward to see how that plays off, plays out on screen. Yeah, I I am excited. Look, like hear me. I'm excited for Super Supergirl because it's about time she gets her own film. Yeah. Um, however, I'm still hey, she had one in '87. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm still missing out on my Superboy. I'm still like, look, I like Titans, but 
man, I need, I need, they're giving Damian Wayne a film, and I'm just, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit, because it's a good story, I'm sure it'll be good, yeah. but I, I need me some Superboy. They got Booster Gold, guys. Give Tim all the Superman content. Boost, booster Gold, I mean, <laughs> I love oh, Booster I'm so in Smallville. I'm so excited for Booster Gold. Yeah, I'm so excited for Booster. Yeah. I think it's going to be hilarious. Be uh, Lantern's going to be fun. Uh, fun too. I'm excited. I'm really excited about Lanterns it being a series and not a film. I think that's going to really pay off. Do we need a Waller series? <laughs> this is a real question. I do am we, curious how that's going to. Do play we need out. it? I don't think we need it unless it depends on what they're doing, though. It could be like a good stepping point to set up some future conflicts because Waller is Waller is a terrible person who tries to do things for like the greater good. The anti Nick you know, Fury. Save the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, literally the last thing she did in the comics was she took over earth three, like a whole entire earth to deal with some coming conflict that has yet to be seen. It's like, yeah, she's like, I- I'm going to basically ruin another universe to save mine. You know, that's <laughs> Waller to a T. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it could be good to like see her set up some future, things because she always has all of this knowledge she's a very smart very well equipped person like she's mm. a person who like knew that bruce wayne is batman who knew that clark kent was superman you yeah. know all that fun stuff yeah yeah I, and i'm curious too because i didn't see any more peacemaker on here either which that was a you know that was a hit and so i'm yeah. wondering is he keeping we're seeing waller so um is this going to be the same waller of the the old and I, I'm just, I don't know, maybe yeah. I'm still just bitter because Henry's not involved in all this, but I'm, I'm just curious. It is the same Waller. Uh, like, the same act, uh, actress, I meant. Like, is it the same? Yes. <sighs> See, and that's, that's, that's I'm just still bitter, weird. I guess. That's, I mean, okay. Yeah, so, like, it's, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to jump in a little bit. I think that Waller is a great choice, though. Like, I think, like, you know, Viola Davis's Waller is. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. 10 out of 10. I loved Henry Cavill as Superman. Hey, don't make me look. Don't, don't say something you're going to regret here. Justin. (laughs) No, no, no. But I am okay with the idea of moving on from him as Superman to start with a younger Superman to get a new long, have some longevity there. Like one of the issues, you know, we ran into with like some of the people like, we have Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. He was great, but that man started with an expiration date because he's he's old. Yeah. Like, I think that also the other thing that we can do, we can see is kind of him taking some of the Marvel playbook and casting, like, relatively newer actors who are good into roles to kind of right. push them forward to stardom. Like, Chris Hemsworth wasn't a household name, really, before. That's true, yeah. Marvel, like he started, you know, but like around the same time as Thor, he was in Cabin in, in the Woods, which was not a wildly successful movie, you right. know, compared to now, everyone knows who Chris Hemsworth is. See, like on principle, I agree with you. Like, I, I, I get it. I understand it. I'm for it. But, but it's like, <laughs> it's like, it, 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 it makes me bitter that they're keeping some actors and everything. Like, obviously, they don't keep everyone, but it just, it just kind of irks me a little bit. So, anyways, um, it's like they could have done. They could have kept him with El, like Elseworlds or something, or or like what they're trying to do, which we could have included in our news, is like they're trying to do the Snyderverse on Netflix. Like, there's a fan petition out right now, okay. uh, which I <laughs> doubt will no. gain any traction. Yeah. But DC's not going to touch that for ten foot pole. No, 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 no. All right, let's move forward. Um, Though it is not certain how many more might come, uh, Gunn is keeping some of the current. Oh, here we go. Uh, is keeping some of the currently in production films as a part of Elseworlds universe. This includes Matt Reeves' The Batman Two and Todd Phillips' Joker Two. Um, I'm both for it. Um, I know he started because Warner Brothers was a mess, but I'm glad that he's respecting the art and the work that's come from both yeah. of those guys. Um, and I'm excited to see both. Um. Is Aquaman was Aquaman canceled or is it still happening? It's still happening. It's so still what, releasing. So, what is <laughs> what is that? Well, universe? apparently, the Flash is going to restart everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all of those movies that are already in production. It's kind of like uh, remember when Disney bought Fox? Yeah. yeah. And like New Mutants came out, <laughs> and it was just kind of like 
Yeah. Here, here you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, here's here's to answer your question, Jordan. Uh, regarding some of the other movies and characters from the Snyderverse, here's what Gunn said. Quote, I think what we've gotten, uh, excuse me, I think that we've gotten lucky with the next four movies, frankly, because we have Shazam, which leads into Flash, which resets everything, which then goes into Blue Beetle, I forgot about that, that which is sense. totally disconnected. He can totally be a part of the DCU, goes into Aquaman and Lost Kingdom, which leads into Superman, our first big project. Uh, but the one thing that we can promise is that everything from Superman forward, or from our first project forward will be canon it will be connected we're using the same actors from the past we're using some actors from the past excuse me we're not using other actors from the past but everything from that moment forward will be connected and consistent so it's a hodgepodge mm -hmm. and i'm sure there'll be clarity later yeah um but they're they're definitely trying to start it anew so i don't know how it's all going to happen in flash um uh, but we got no henry I... cavill and no ben affleck i know that for sure yeah. yeah, I mean, also he's way too old to be Batman, in my opinion. Um, also, I hated his Batman. <laughs> I his actually little... liked his Batman. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, Batman v Superman. I watched that movie and I was like, "Wow, Zack Snyder just wanted to make a Punisher movie, but he yeah. got DC instead." Yeah. Wait, this you still man have, killed. You still haven't watched how the, many people? Did it. You still Batman's haven't watched the one rule just have you. is no guns. <laughs> don't kill people. Sorry, two rules: don't kill people, no guns. And what did that Batman do? He's like. Uh, I'm a serial killer and I use all the guns. Like, and it's funny because he got offended you, like you, by Superman killing people. Well, right. not on purpose, but I mean, it's no, kind of no, funny. No, but Superman killing people has happened in the past. And also, that one was very in character. Like yeah. him having to kill Zod because he doesn't have a Phantom Zone projector. And uh, like that he did happens. that in the 90s in the comics. Yeah, and like, exactly. And that, that, that feeling, that reaction, I thought it was great because usually Superman can get away with things because he's Superman and he's experienced and he's smart and he's stronger than your average person. Yeah. But in that situation, <laughs> he didn't have the experience. He didn't have the all of the, the preparation and, right. and he didn't have the strength advantage. Yeah. So that, to me, was a very in-character Superman having to kill somebody to save people that Superman would do and be remorseful of. Right. Yeah. Batman will <laughs> not kill people, even if it is for the greater good. Like he's never killed the Joker, even though the Joker's always come back and so there's debates as to whether he can even well, you know, be I, killed. I wonder, but that's not the point. The point is <laughs> Batman. Mm, sorry, I'm ranting. I'm ranting. You got me I on my DC, DC EU it. rants. I, I wonder, it. I wonder if in Snyder's mind, this was like after, like maybe this was right after Joker had killed whatever Robin, I don't know who it would have been, but killed whatever Robin. Uh, he said it was Dick Grayson, I think, in an in interview. Oh, but really? That was, definitely a, that was definitely a Tim Drake costume. And it was so <laughs> weird because the one he killed was Jason Todd. I'm like, you're just trying to touch on all three Robins? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So, okay, overall feelings. How, how are we overall feeling about the future of the DC universe? I have a little bit of hope. I am honestly a little excited. I did not know Tom King was writing before this <laughs> yeah. recording, so I'm excited. I also, like, I'm a huge MCU fan, and I'm a huge Marvel Comics fan. Don't get me wrong. I probably have more Marvel Comics than DC Comics. Um, Got to retaliate after my basement flooded last week. But <laughs> I actually like DC characters more. Like Nightwing, all-time favorite character. Dick Grayson, hands down. Um, the whole Bat family, mm, great. Yeah, Flash, yeah. I've read every issue of The Flash has come out since 1986. Oh, we know. Unless there's a new one today. <laughs> but, like, so, like, for me, it's, like, the idea of, like, the DCEU being good, or yeah. DCU, or whatever they're calling it, that, for me, would be, like, the best thing. Right. Because I've always wanted... Like, the, the MCU did something that, like, I never thought was possible, bringing, like, comic book accurate movies, like, where you get characters who are fantastical and ridiculous, whatever, and Warner Brothers always went for this gritty, grounded kind of thing, like, the Dark Knight movie was, yeah. were great, Batman Begins, great movies, but it was definitely a much more grounded take, like, you've got characters in the background who allude to comic characters, like, Deadshot and whatever, but right. it's, like, it's never got that whole fantastical take, like, I want to see a human who has 
who's unrealistically good at fighting and lucky and whatever and being Batman <laughs> and interacting with a character who's a functional god like Superman. Like I want right. I want that dynamic. I want the conflict that comes from that and I want the ridiculousness of just being in that universe and not trying to make it so realistic in air quotes, you know, but <laughs> I'm hopeful. I'm excited. I just want it to be good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll agree with you guys. Uh, as a Superman fan, as a super family fan, uh, I am excited to possibly see, even if it's animation, to see all this play out and be interconnected and to have a common theme or direction forward. And so um, I, I, I like James Gunn. I, I have not been disappointed from him yet. I mean, we're going to see Guardians 3 this coming May, so we'll definitely see where his state of mind is. But um, him taking Superman... In general, I don't have any issue with, so I guess we'll see how it works out. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, let's move forward. One last quick news. We can figure out that much news. Like, like not that much. I mean, other than all that DC yeah. stuff, but not that much dropped. Um, talk about the Umbrella Academy real quick. The other day, it was revealed that Nick Offerman. Um, here, here's here's the full here's three people that got cast in the season four of Umbrella Academy. You got Nick Offerman as Doctor Gene. Um, the ooh, the Bido. Thibodeau? Thibodeau. Thibodeau. Uh, Megan Mullally as Dr. Jean Thibodeau. And David Cross as Cy Grossman. Um, I'll be one Sorry, Jean and Jean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just caught that. I just caught that. <laughs> uh, yeah, G-E-N-E and J-E-A-N. Um, I, I'll be honest. I'll, Justin, I don't know if you've got that far in Umbrella Academy, but I, I have no idea who these characters are. But I'm yeah. excited that Nick Hoffman's finally in some kind of comic book thing. Yeah. Uh, Nick Offerman, you know, we're going to probably touch on it later, but the last of us, like, Hey, like, yeah, he's been, he's been, he's been doing great things. Um, I'm behind in the umbrella Academy. I have not finished season two yet. So come on. Yeah. Come on. Get your shit together. Yeah. (laughs) Well, next time you intro him, make sure you, <laughs> Say get that. on him. Yeah. If you won't, I will. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, you know, next time we record, I might have been caught up by then. You never know. You'll sure. never yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, we'll put some yeah. put some money on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like when I said I was gonna watch the Snyder cut and I uh definitely uh, still no. watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you well should. With, you got nothing to do in Detroit. Right, you got nothing up there. Hey, I got my PlayStation. I got oh, lots okay. to do. <laughs> All right. All right, well, with all that uh, uh, news, we'll be right back for some review. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thank you all for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave a rating on your favorite podcast platform and YouTube. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at at AlwaysMorePod. If you'd like to ask us a question for us to answer on the pod, you can email us at AlwaysMorePodcast at gmail.com. Or you can call us on our AlwaysMore hotline and leave a voicemail question at 254-218-4042. You can also follow all of our social medias individually and as the Always More Podcast. Thanks for listening. Let's get back to it. All right, everybody. Justin is waking up, and we are ready to go once again. Uh, <laughs> we probably aren't going to ever show the video for this, but I kind of wish we did. I might just take some screenshots later and sell so that. Yeah. <laughs> man. Uh, all right, guys. We are in the review <laughs> section of this show. Uh, we don't have a lot, but we got some deep. I mean, we got a little bit. We got a little bit. So let's start off with Marvel and let's talk about the kind of. Is that the only future film? Yeah, it's the only future film that we can talk about this uh, this yeah. episode, uh, and that is Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, this is a spoiler alert. We spoiler, will be going spoiler, to spoilers. Spoiler. spoiler, spoiler. Um, and here's the uh, here's the synopsis: Superhero duo Scott Lang and Hope Van Dyne. Together with Hope's parents, Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, find themselves exploring the quantum realm, interacting with strange new characters and embarking on an adventure that will push them beyond the limits of what they thought was possible. Um, this was a film. 
Where do we start? This was a movie. Oh, I, I know where to start. I know where to start. <laughs> let me let me just share okay. my biggest grievance with this film. Well, let me just sit. Whoa, 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 okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, well, let, let's let's, let's, let's yes, do this first. Yes. Okay, because I think we had to do this with an what was was it Thor? Mm -hmm. Let's let's talk about the goods. Let's talk okay. about the oh, positives. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, I'm not trying to like undermine the film. Like it's really honestly my biggest grievance wasn't like oh this is bad. It was just him, him. Him, that guy, can't say his name. Who is he, Voldemort? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Bro, it drove me so mad. I'm like, cause we all, we all know. Yeah, we've been advertising Galifant Majors was yes. cast as King, the mother effing conqueror. Yeah, from a long year. time. And then they're just like, him. Who, who is it? Don't know. He's so bad. Yeah. Okay. okay. Or the conqueror. <laughs> they mentioned that too. Sorry. Right, sorry. Right. Yeah, sorry. That was just that was just my biggest gripe. I'm like, we're half an hour deep in this film, and we can't name him. <laughs> okay, uh, some goods. Um, as a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I enjoyed the film. Like, I came out feeling okay. That was a film. Was it a Marvel masterpiece? Absolutely not. Is it in my top, you know, half of the Marvel rankings? Absolutely not. Um, but did I like it? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Like it was it for was an, a film. For it, an Ant Man movie, yeah. I, I enjoyed the scopeness of it. I enjoyed the new Whoa, 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 for an Ant Man movie. Shut your mouth, Jordan. Don't <laughs> what do you mean, Scott? I'm not. I For an Ant Man movie. For an Ant yeah, dude, this was by far the worst of the three. You think so? Yes. Justin? Uh let's not Finish, finish. Go ahead, keep going. Let hold on. Let's let's yeah, circle no, yeah, back going, to that. Going, let's circle going, back to going. that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, sorry. Don't I'm just saying. You. Look, all I'm saying is, there's there's only maybe one or two Marvel films that I just don't like, and even then, I don't think I don't like them. I like. I'm really trying to think about like the Dark World and uh, Iron Man Two. <laughs> Iron Man Two. And I'm like, it's I, always those two. And I don't know if I like. I, mean, I, I will sit through them and probably be my phone, but I won't be like, I cannot watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I get you. Yeah, I get you. Um, Iron Man 2's in fight was really was really fun. Right. Really cool visually. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some things to appreciate about it. Appreciate, appreciate about it. And with Quantumania, there is definitely some sparkling moments. Yeah. And in the theater, and it might be a very different watch at home, um, but in the theater, I didn't like... I wasn't bored with it, and I wasn't like, oh, this is the worst movie ever. But I could definitely tell what it was, and it was not a masterpiece. And I could definitely tell that, in, especially after the first act was over. I was like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's my that's my good. I, I kind of twist off to bad, but that's my good. <laughs> it's definitely kind of both. Yeah, yeah. I would say I honestly, I enjoyed it. Um, I probably wouldn't go watch it again in theaters. It's not like Spider Man, right. which I let ruin my life multiple times. Yeah. Um, but I probably give it a six point five to seven out of ten. And that's exactly where I was. I think I gave it a six or a seven on Letterbox, and that's like that's in between like the forty percent on what was it? Uh, Rotten uh, Tomatoes. Yeah, for critic score, and then eighty three yeah. percent for audience score. So was, Which, it was very, it was very interesting because, like, the thing is, I watched that movie and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Like, it was weird, it was ridiculous, right? Um, but there was nothing other than the avoiding King's name for way too long. <laughs> way too there was long. nothing in it that, like, I felt was actually bad. Like, I didn't feel like the writing was bad, the acting was not bad. I didn't feel like there was too many jokes. I didn't feel like there were weird jokes that didn't land or <laughs> Um, and <laughs> it, it was, it was just like, I'm like, okay, I can see some people be like, the movie is like, okay. Yeah. Like there's nothing in it that really hit me. It's like, oh, this is bad. Like right. nothing in it was bad. And that I thought was good in a sense. It's like, you're not going to, it's not the best Marvel movie by any leap, but like, I don't have anything really bad to say about it outside of king's name yeah like can we can we just say the man's name <laughs> yeah like it's fine like there's nothing wrong with it but it's not nothing like great about it it's really just an okay film yeah and so and i think that's it, it really if i'm not mistaken it did really good with people who who are like fresh into the mcu like it kind of scored well with people like that mm -hmm. um 
<coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, so... Okay, let's talk about some details about the movie. Okay, so we kind of got some general feel. Wait, wait. Jordan, what was uh, your... It was kind of like y'all's, but... Um, I, yeah, the Kang ignoring his name was really annoying. Uh, I thought off the off the back, I thought it was really annoying um, how Janet kept all this in for so long. Um, <laughs> well, she never thought she was going back in. Like, oh, you're talking about just like even yeah, when they were in? Just yeah, just even when they were in. Uh, but even when they were out, I felt like that would have been... I mean, I get like, you know, what she's done. But I mean, I felt like that could have been a... I want to say simple conversation, but you know, it would have been like, "Hey, there's we're dealing with this out here, but this is here." You know, like a mention at least. But um, overall, I liked it. Um, I since we kind of mentioned what we don't like, I did not like that uh, Luis was not in there. Oh uh, yeah, one of my. It's probably oh, like uh, he's not in there. I think that Marvel cut ties with him. <gasps> Why? Uh, and Ti due to their uh, floating around their controversies lately. Oh, uh, I've not heard this. I thought I read uh, something. He, he's oh, uh, he's a Scientologist, the Luis oh. guy, and I I heard some rumors. I cannot confirm, so listeners don't come crucify me. Um, some stuff related to the Danny Masterson trial, uh, and I was like, mm. yeah, I would distance. And too. I'm sure yeah, Marvel was like, peace out. Yeah, oh, that's unfortunate. That's crazy. I didn't hear that because the only thing I heard is that because they were asking um, Paul Rudd in interviews, like where was he? But they said that the plan was always to hop straight into the quantum realm to never have like you know to introduce like who did we see? We saw uh, the de- de- uh, the detect the FBI guy. What's his name? Oh, um, uh, we saw characters. Jimmy Woo. Yeah, we saw Jimmy. Woo. Yes. We saw characters, but it was never intended to be like, okay, we're gonna set this up. It was just to, you know, hop straight into yeah. it. Um, I mean, I thought it was cool how they hopped straight into it. I like that pace. I thought that pace was going to be, like, driving the whole time. Like, okay, we're going to see. I love the backstory um, of how Janet and Kang met. I think that kind of set the tone of people that really didn't know who he was. Um, I thought it was cool. Got a lot of Spy Kid vibes. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh! Literally, <laughs> my sister's <laughs> husband sending me Spy yeah. Kids memes in the middle of the movie because yeah. yeah. of Modoc. Yeah. Uh, but overall, ending was cool. Yeah, we'll wait for the credit scenes. But yeah, yeah. good. All right. Oh but- my gosh! Sorry, I want to just touch on Jonathan Majors. Killed if him. he was not king, I would want him to be Doctor Doom because holy yeah. shit, he brings his. It. His it's, arrogance, yeah. like his, like, yeah, he made you believe it. Like, mm-hmm. he, like, <laughs> it's like, am I on your like, side? Am I, am I on the wrong side? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let this man win. Right? <laughs> also, he's a, cool, he's a great actor. Also, just like when you know his suit got wrecked by the ants and he's fighting Scott and he's just laughing. Yeah, he's like, oh no, 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 I'm still better than you and I'm gonna win because he's I've killed wrecked. many an Avenger. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, it's so cool. Nah, King is. He said he's not even gonna like watch this movie to challenge Wild. himself for the next <laughs> the next coming films. Oh, like, okay. You know, to kind of separate the well, that's part of him. Yeah, since he's gonna be so many different <laughs> variations of himself, which is smart. So, oh, I'm so excited for that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some details of the movie. Um, let's talk about the the elephant in the room, and that is Modok. Um, the the guy is. He's Modoc, definitely different from the comics. Yep, definitely uh, weird. Butt How cheeks. Did, butt cheeks. Um, I didn't hate it. <laughs> I didn't hate it either. I didn't. Honestly, he wasn't that different from the comics. I mean, like the the character itself. I mean, like him like, being Darren Cross, yes, but right. like Modoc is kind of a joke of a villain. He's a guy. He's a giant head with tiny, tiny legs. Oh yeah, tiny absolutely. Legs. Like as far as far as like and who he was in the movie, like like besides the character. Oh yeah, spot on. Like yeah, no no, no problem with that. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was definitely. I, I was actually surprised how far they 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 went crazy. They went mm-hmm. a little weird with it. And like yeah, all right. They. But I cheeks. was surprised they actually went that far. <laughs> yeah, with me it. too. Me too. I mean, also, I, there was a theory. Uh, after the first Ant Man, I don't know if y'all remember this from those early days of the internet. You know, 
five years ago, <laughs> but that right? Darren survived and would be Modoc because of the way that he shrunk down. Oh mm. my gosh. Wow. I feel like I heard that before. Like you guys, yeah. At least I got to die in Avenger. <laughs> Bro, the memes on that, the memes, the memes I've been seeing on Twitter are like, <coughs> wow. They were like, how are they going to beat Kang without their best Avenger? <laughs> How are they going to beat all these Kangs? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, They're not. What did we feel about uh, Hank Pym's army ants and their civilization? It was cool to look at, but I do not. I Listen. Okay, let's, yeah. This is a don't like what I did not like, that uh, these ants, I mean, they didn't take them down single-handedly, but they, they kind of took Kang. I mean, this man has conquered planets. He's killed Avengers. He got taken down by some ants. I mean, here's the thing about King. King, first of all, they were giant ants. I'm a, yeah, I'm I mean, still. There. They were giant. I understand thousand, that. Over I understand thousands that. of years. They're not like some, like, oh, we got a colony of ants, so we just made them big. No, nah, man, they, they had a society. <laughs> they were smart. They got, they got Pym they as pimp. their god. Like, come on. Pym as their god. <laughs> Uh, oh my god also I mean Kang has also been taken down by many a lesser uh, hero yeah Captain America yeah yes but I mean who ain't who ain't that smart he's no Reed Richards no (laughs) yeah it was definitely like I'm not mad about it I I guess we can go ahead and cut there but like as far as the Conqueror being dead is he dead? Like that's my first question. Like yes, I don't think so. Yes. No. Okay. Now hear me. I out. think he's dead. No, I, I do too. I, I do too. My point is, is I don't. I would not be surprised if they were to bring the conqueror back. Now, in my brain, the dude's already been around for a long time, and he's conquered a lot of things. Just because we didn't get to see him conquer a lot of things and kill a lot of Avengers, mm-hmm. doesn't mean he wasn't very strong and very powerful and did a lot of things. Yeah, he was taken down. By yes, a huge ass army of ants, but he, he was defeated, and it wasn't like it was an easy fight. Um, so I, I'm not mad about how he went down. I see a lot of people online like upset about like, oh, he got taken out by you know ants, whatever, like Ant Man, and like again, we see that kind of stuff happen a lot of times, like these you know smaller Avengers or whatever take down these bigger guys. Yeah. So, I mean, Scotland took down Doom after Doom killed Cassie. So there you go. Cassie's acting. How did we like that? Did we talk? I about had no it? problems with it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Jordan, Jordan, did you have an issue? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like you brought it up. I I'm brought, like, the only I reason I brought it up. I mean, <laughs> okay, go ahead. I just, I don't know. It was All right, were towards you the second and second half of the movie was kind of like okay. It was just eh. To me, so there's a podcast I listen to, um, a comic book. Um, uh, what is it called? It's called Phase Zero, but it's by the people at comicbook.com. And Brandon Davis, he's one of the main hosts. He says he has a problem, and we can get to, towards the most of this if, as far as encompassing the whole phase four. But he talks about how in this film, he didn't really feel a lot of emotional connection with any characters, mm-hmm. and I kind of felt that way too, a little bit, other than Scott and um. Cassie? Yeah, Cassie. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't as deep as it was in, like, the first film or even in, like, um, I mean, obviously, even in the second film a little bit. And so mm-hmm. I think that's probably one of the things that maybe was what made this film just okay mm-hmm. is that there wasn't a huge, strong, emotional, I don't know. Like, yeah. obviously, the stakes are high, but I just I, I didn't feel it. Everything was happening so yeah, fast. Yeah, it's like I didn't, I didn't really care about Janet. Yeah. Or on any level, it's like, oh, hey, c- hey, cool, you know, you're here, and I'm. I, it was even like more so in relationship to like hopes, like I have to have my mom back, yeah. Versus, I care about Janet. Like Janet is, in a sense, objectified as a plot device rather than as a fully fleshed out character. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I mean, the performance was fantastic, but that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, she's a fantastic actress. Yeah. So, I mean, I expect nothing less from her. But, yeah, but, like, she was more plot device than actual a character who I feel like we're even expected to relate to, just the way mm. the script was written. Mm. Okay. Um, 
Did we feel like this movie set up the future of the MCU any differently than how Loki did it? Absolutely. How? Well, I would say when we saw Loki, for those of us who did see Loki, Mm -hmm. he who remains is eccentric and he just dies at the end. (laughs) Like, no, no, like, I mean, it was great. The, the acting was masterful. The Mm. the dialogue was wonderful. All of that happened and it was great. Like that, don't get me wrong when I say he just dies, but like he just dies. He doesn't actually really truly explain the threat of the coming multiversal war that's Mm -hmm. happening. When Kang shows up, Kang is terrifying. Like you, you kind of get all these people are afraid of him and you don't understand why until he shows up on the battlefield and he kills 120 people in about 90 seconds. And you're like, Oh, Oh, you're just, and like, even like watching them fight him and he's just unfazed by, you know, it's like to put in perspective, Scott took down one of, uh, the Chitauri's flying serpent things. He punched it in the face and took it down. And King is like, "You're an ant. Goodbye." Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, there, there's definitely like King is like definitely powerful. He's definitely, and it definitely was to, you know, people's credit, the ants. You know, like love them or hate them, that like really made <laughs> the, his defeat possible. Yeah. But I think what we what's going to happen is like we've seen King die, yeah, that King die, and I think he's dead. I think that version of King is dead, and I don't think he's going to come back because I don't think he's, he's dead. not like okay. So it's like all right, King, King, King. That that version of King the Conqueror is dead, but we've got so many other King the Conquerors from different points in right. different from different Earths mm-hmm. or different points in that timeline. Well, so he- it's like. The problem of King is that he's so fluid. It's like King dies, but he's not dead. He's not well, here's dead. my question. Do you feel like that might be a problem if there's not one big bad King, whether it's Prime or whoever, that is kind of like the pinpoint, okay, we know that the, if we kill this one, like chances mm. are we can get the rest of the other ones. Because like, th- th- I guess that might be a frustration with a lot of fans is like the multiverse is so big and there's so many Kings. Like what's the point of killing these like almost pawn kings. Yeah. I don't think any of them's going to necessarily come off as a pawn cuz there appears to be some sort of organization between uh Immortus and Ramatut, Ramatut being the fair looking king right. at the end and Immortus being the older one with the uh obviously weird mustache that yes. looks kind of like East Asian inspired. <laughs> yeah. Um and but like seeing all the various versions of Kang from the comics was like a nice cool callback. But I think that what's going to happen in the end of the King Dynasty is that they're all going to lose. And between that and the incursions that have already been set up in Multiverse of Madness, yeah, everything dies, and then that leads into Secret Wars. I mean, that's really how I think that's going to play out. Huh. Is either a bunch of people die in the King dynasty. Is and that, then there's probably going to be stuff in the gap that's going to lead into secret wars where we really oh, see yeah. the collapse of the universes mm-hmm. and secret wars is where you come out of that. Probably with only one universe ending the whole multiverse saga. Mm. Could be. Yeah. I mean, cause that's kind of how it actually worked in the comics was not King, but like secret wars, all these bits and pieces of various universes formed battle world in the second secret wars. Mm-hmm. And at the end of it was um, the new Marvel universe. And that's how we ended up with Miles Morales in the main Marvel universe mm-hmm. and various other holdovers from the ultimate universe, as well as just reality breaking things. So right. I feel like that's just kind of like the direction that they're going to go because it also gives them really great opportunities to bring in characters like the X-Men without having to necessarily do like, we have to do this long origin story right. start from zero. Mm-hmm. Um, we can start from a place of, I don't know, being near modern with Krakoa, you know, being them being a society on an Island of their own, you know, and having mm. all of this stuff built up without having to do yeah. 
the origin because people are just i feel like audiences are tired of origins like we're right, tired yes. of origins yes like we've all seen spider-man's origin we've all seen batman we've all seen superman like we don't need those anymore yeah. right a quick question for you um this we can make this really i don't want to i don't want to expand this too long but it was just a thought in my head do you think we'll get a house of x in this uh saga or do you think it'll come after if we get it it's probably going to come after mm-hmm. i mean there was stuff you know like the fox actors contract stating that any thing through i think it was 2025 you know yeah they get like first offerings on so i think that that's kind of something that marvel's been kind of waiting out which is why we can get someone like Hugh Jackman back. We've got Patrick Stewart in Multiverse of Madness right. versus down the road recasting and starting a whole new X-Men franchise. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right, Jordan, final uh, review. What was you, one out of 10, what would you give this? Seven. Seven? Justin? Probably seven. I, I think I agree. I think a seven, seven. was a solid number. <clears throat> All right. Well, that was Ant-Man... Um, do we think, okay, last thing, I'm probably, I'm stirring the pot here and this, this will be, I good, like it. I like this it. will like be a it. good, this will be a good TikTok, uh, uh, question. Do we feel like this was better or worse than Thor Love and Thunder? Better. Oh, uh, I don't think it was. Kang made that movie. Kang, yeah, you know, <laughs> Kang. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah. Let's let let let's it's call it Kang better. Let's call it better. It was better. different. It hit yeah. different, yes. but let's better. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, moving along. Uh, let's talk quickly about the Last of Us. Um, at this current moment in time, uh, which, by the way, uh, side note, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the episode. Uh, this is technically February's um, uh, <laughs> Always More Nerd, um, and but we're releasing it on March 1st. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be fair, we are recording it on, uh, on the 28th. Yeah, so, you know. There are only 28 yeah, days in this right. month, huh? Um, anyways, at the, date, uh, at the time of this recording, uh, only one of us has watched all of the episodes. Justin has seen three. And Jordan has seen none. Zero. Uh, so we're not going to do a deep dive into all this. Um, have any of you guys played the games? No. I have played the games pretty much up until about where I am in the oh show God, right now. So, so not very far. Moving forward, <laughs> everything is going to be pretty new. That's hilarious. Hey, I was, I was, I was working a stressful <laughs> job. And then I was playing a stressful game, and I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work for me. <laughs> uh, Chris just let me borrow his PlayStation. So I just I, I played uh, Last of Us way back when we lived together, um, but I just finished part two the other day. Mm. Uh, so I'm all set for season two as well now. Um, okay, so Last of Us is set a— Set to be depressed and cry a lot. Say again? <laughs> You're set to be depressed and uh, cry a I'm lot. I'm ready for my heart to break all over again. Um, the Last of Us is a TV series based on the critically acclaimed video game of the same name developed by Naughty Dog. The series is produced by HBO and written by Craig Mazin, uh, who uh, did Chernobyl, which, by the way, if you have not seen that miniseries, it is fantastic. And Neil Druckmann, the creative director of the game. The uh, Last of Us is set as a post-apocalyptic world where most of humanity has been wiped out by a fungal infection that turns people into zombie-like creatures known as Infected. The story follows Joel, a smuggler tasked with escorting a teenage girl named Ellie across the U.S. in hopes of finding a group of resistance fighters known as the Fireflies who may hold the key to a cure for the infection. Keynote, uh, they are not, by definition, zombies. Uh, they are what's really scary is as we see in nature the cordyceps uh, they take over a body in most cases like ants and like smaller insects um, and they just take over the body and the brain is still functioning it can still detect things at times and so if you get taken by one of those things you're just witnessing the the fungus taking over and wow just eating your family members so you're just like there in the back seat, just watching. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. I mean, you'll you'll eventually probably lose some kind of consciousness, especially if it spreads throughout your brain and everything. Uh, but for the most part, wow. you're not dead. You're just you're not there. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, on zombie. Yeah, interesting. On that. Um, well, Justin, have you felt about the first three episodes? <laughs> 
my gosh. Uh, you know, now I'm second guessing myself, and maybe it was four. Um, I'm gonna pull up HBO Max while we while I talk about it. Um, I'm gonna jump ahead from the first episode and say, Anna Torv, um, phenomenal actress. Um, it was really sad to see her cast in the show and immediately no right. spoiler alert, <laughs> you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's still like Game of Thrones. Um, Just expect most people in the show to die, like, and you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, she's such a good actress, and, like, I really enjoyed, like, she started in Fringe, and I really enjoyed that. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's really good. Oh, wow, well, yeah, no, it was only three episodes, because the third episode is long. It is too long, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, um, Nick Offerman. Oof. My goodness. Wonderful, wonderful range. His acting. Yes. Great. Um it's, it's always it's always the comedic actors. Like they, they they can portray like I'm not saying that you know dramatic actors can't do comedy, but those that are really good at comedy can oftentimes do really good at drama. Brian Cranston is a and perfect example. It's differently because you're not expecting that from them. Right, right. Yeah. So anyway, like, sorry. I'm not going to spoil this for anyone who hasn't seen it, but the wine bottle oh! at the end, like towards the end of the episode, I was like, man. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. If I feel like, sorry, I was about ready to kill my cat because he was, she's tossing this thing around. Um, I feel <laughs> like this third episode, which by the way, it is not very closely aligned with the game other than like the name of the character. Um, but it is so just, ah, it shows, this show does such a great job of showing the humanity behind a post-apocalyptic world where a lot of shows don't do that. Walking Dead kind of touches on it because it's so freaking long. Um, and you get it in long sequences or like long in the long term, but this show, it's not going to be that long. You're getting what, nine episodes this first season. Uh, and so it, it, it really knows how to pack it in really well into individual episodes. Um, and that's what I'm really appreciating about this show. And the fact that it is doing, and it's not like a mirror image of the game, but there are some lines and some sequences to where it's like word for word, like from the game. Like identical. It's so wild. TikTok. Yeah, it, it's absolutely wild. Yeah, all over TikTok. It mm -hmm. shows like these comparisons. Side by side. Yeah. Uh, side by side. It's, it's really phenomenal. It's not everything because obviously once you kind of move along in the show, they take some liberty to change some things, but what's really cool, what I've noticed, is that even if they do change some lines or change some settings, not settings, but like just placements of things, they still keep that same feeling that you get playing the game, watching the show. And that's what's really important here. I think that's like one of the, the grievances when it comes to a lot of these shows and movies that are adaptations of video games is that they feel like you have to create this brand new world and this brand new universe in the show, like with Halo. And it's like, you don't have to do that. I mean, you can, but you got to have that same vibe, that same feeling that drives you from the video game. And I feel like what the Halo show did not do was carry that same emotion. So. Agreed. All right. Well, I need to go watch this. Yes, you now do. Now that I have a login. <laughs> uh, I will say this, guys, before we move on. Uh, like what you're saying, Justin, great performances all around. Uh, Pedro Pascal, he is uh, he is the daddy of the internet right now. Um, just <laughs> he is dominating everything. Uh, tomorrow. Oh, my God. Tomorrow, Mandalorian comes out. What, did that, what, what time does that come out? Yo. I might, 2 yeah, I might have to stay up. I'm thinking about um, it. I'm really thinking no, about it. No, it's 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 uh it's like 4 a.m. Oh, or something crazy man. like that. No, you're not. Okay. I'm thinking I work at I leave for work at 7 a.m. tomorrow. I'm thinking about getting up early and trying to squeeze <laughs> it go. in that's way before work. All right. Uh oh well that's that's all of our reviews for this episode. Um don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some quick previews about some trailers and shows and movies that are coming right around the corner. And we are back, back from our news and our reviews, and now it's time for some previews. 
You okay over there, yeah, Jordan? I'm just yeah. My cousin sent me something. All right. Um, yeah. You what? Okay? You good? <laughs> no, it's just yeah, it's, yeah. I'm good. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. We're here to talk about some trailers, some things that are coming around the corner. Everything that I believe I've listed in this uh, preview section is coming out this year. Uh, in fact, most of it is pretty soon. So let's just get right into it. Let's talk about some Marvel TV. Uh, right around the corner, we got Secret Invasion coming out okay. uh, with our guy Nick Fury, uh, who is definitely not a scroll this time, right? That's what we're assuming not here. Scroll. Not a scroll. Not a scroll. I forgot. So before this episode, this came up, and I was like, wait, there's a trailer? I totally forgot that trailer happened. Not going to lie. <laughs> it's a long teaser, trailer, whatever. Teaser. It was a teaser, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really reveal the plot. Like, like wait, what is it? What, what are they doing? And we don't really know. Like, we, If you know Secret Invasion, you kind of got a glimpse of it, and you got a hint of it. But yeah. uh, we don't have a, a, a themed thing going on. In fact, they didn't even have a, what's her name in the tr- teaser, I don't think. Um Oh, what's who plays Khaleesi? What's her name? Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about you're Emma talking Clark. About. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Did, I don't think I don't remember seeing her. I could I, be wrong. Yeah, and we don't know who she's playing. Right, indeed. Right. Yeah. So a lot of there's a lot of speculation, and like I think I know who she's playing. Well, tell us. Yeah, no, I think. <laughs> tell the world. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I am trying to remember how to pronounce her name, uh, but she was in the comics during the Secret of Age, and she was spite. She pretended to be a uh, Spider Woman, uh, Veronke, 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 Veronke. Hey, you know whatever. She's the Scroll Queen. She was the ruler oh. of uh, their whole little empire. Mm. Air quotes because they were pretty decimated. They were trying to take over the Earth. It didn't work out. Mm. For obvious reasons, yeah. Actually, not obvious reasons. Norman Osborn, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, if that's true, dude, that yeah, would that, fit. That'd be pretty cool. Like just just her as an yeah. actress and like her background, like that would be hilariously comical and like fitting. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. All right. Uh, does anyone have any other opinions or thoughts about this? Because I sure as heck don't. I don't. <laughs> Uh, I'm just excited to, to see Samuel L. Jackson in a much more uh, leading role in the Marvel yeah. Universe. Indeed. Indeed. I'm excited to see it because it seems like we've, something we've been like waiting on for a long time to see what's been... There's been so many theories on who's the scroll and all this and that, and it's good to see it's finally happening. Yeah, all. Amen. All right, well, with that being said, let's move on to the movie that's most likely going to break our hearts, and that is Guardians of the Galaxy mm. Volume 3 coming out May 5th. Wow. Um, the trailer which released for the Super Bowl was absolutely um, mm-hmm. devastating. Insane. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, let's talk about the high evolutionary. Uh, he looks like he's going to be the main villain of this film. Um, are we threatened by him? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. No, I, I don't high evolutionary. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say something very inappropriate, but he is <laughs> he is a uh, he is a uh, he's a very uh, emotional man who thinks that he is better than everybody, <laughs> but just kind of sucks. He's like a mediocre villain. He's like, I did this thing, but my plan kind of sucks and isn't going to really accomplish anything. Right. Yeah. I wonder, I I wonder if like, we're going to get like this huge like turn in the story halfway through and it's not going to be about him anymore. Like that, that's my guess. I could be wrong, but do we, um, uh, do we see warlock fighting them though? Not not, we uh, see him fighting someone. It's not clear. Didn't Groot land on him? Or I was that he just was fighting, a uh, ah, what's his name? I thought Groot landed on him. I thought the, uh, what's his name? The big guy, what's his name? Drax? Drax. Drax was fighting <laughs> him in the trailer, no? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I thought I, I saw a shot. It twice, and I refuse to watch it again because, you know, my trailer rules. Yeah. So I'm unclear. Um, but that could also be, like, Iron Man fighting the Guardians. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Kind yeah. of scenario. So... I don't know what direction they're going to take Warlock. I'm really curious to see that because there's so many options. Well, in the second trailer, we got to see him a little bit more in action this time around. Are we any other thoughts, adjustments about that? I mean, so far, I don't see anything that's like I hate it or dislike it. I'm not like in love with him yet, but, you know, it's just a trailer. So 
scene with the Teletubbies. Ah. <laughs> so what was that, Jordan? I was just reading the notes. <laughs> We're talking about the Teletubbies. <laughs> the Teletubbies. The, 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 the scene, scene with Teletubby they, suits. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Um, but yeah, Warlock. I mean, I I don't know yet. Looks I, cool. I just need to see him really in action. Yeah. I I have a lot of questions as to like how he's going to play out. Um, if he's going to just be Warlock or if his like evil Magus personality is going to surface at all or like there's just so many ways places they can go mm. with him but him being entirely disconnected from the soul gym right or is he I mean they were destroyed like, though right he may they are destroyed i mean and that could play some aspect into his creation who knows i don't uh, know okay. probably not that sounds very complicated now that i'm saying it out loud but like I don't. I just don't know what they're gonna do with him. Like he's kind of a blank slate. Yeah. Yep. Uh. All right. Last question for this trailer: Who's dying? I think the trailer's wanting you to believe is uh, Rocket. Um. Uh. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be Rocket, and I honestly don't think it's gonna be Peter. I think it's gonna be Drax. My my money is on Rocket and Drax. Drax is ready. You know, Batista's already came my... out. So he's done. I think if anyone dies, it's going to be Nebula. Oh, she doesn't know. I feel like that. <laughs> I feel like they her. want you to think that like all your favorite, like all your favorite characters aren't safe. And I feel like they're going to keep them alive just a little bit longer. So you're like, Oh, happy ending. And then King's going to be like, surprise, you're dead. That would be <laughs> to have a death. Cool. To have a death that like actually holds some holds weight yeah. in the King Dynasty. Oof, That'd man, what a way to go! Yeah, does yeah that that's the next big one coming out. Yeah, yeah, I'm down for mm-hmm. it. That's, that'd be cool. I could be wrong though. This is just that speculation. Tracks, well, we know you can be wrong. You've been sure. wrong before, Justin. Yeah. We we wrote it down. We just, ne- it. never, <laughs> never. Just that one time, the one time in my oh, life. About the Batman thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's talk about real quick before yeah. we move forward. How do we feel about Phase 4 in general? I know we kind of briefly discussed it um, in December's episode, mm. but a lot of I've heard a lot of grief about where we're at, and I, I personally, I'm trying to remember back in the days of Phase 1, and I'm trying to remember how everything is. And if anything, I feel like there is more direction now than there was at the end of phase one. Like we know, obviously, oh, Thanos absolutely. was coming, but we didn't know what he was. I mean, if you know, if you know comics, you, you kind of knew. Yeah. But like, as far as like what you saw on screen, um, everybody forgot about phase it. four. I think has produced a lot more direction, and um, if anything, sh- just runtime, like so much more runtime than phase one. Yeah, especially with all the shows. I have a good feeling. I mean, agreed. Really, yeah, I think the way that started and the way that it ended um, was really great. We had a lot of a lot of emotion in this this phase. Yeah, phase four definitely. I mean, it. tears, bro, tears. I think my only worry is, and I share this. It with was about people, loss. It definitely was. Yeah, I think my only worry like is I want everyone make, lost. Yeah, I, I want to make sure. Sorry, the delay delays interrupting. <laughs> the delay is killer, man. <laughs> um. I want to make sure that this phase, especially uh, phase five, really makes us connect with whoever else is in the multiverse. Because otherwise, what's the stakes other than just our universe? Yeah. Like, if it really does come down to an end, Dan, like we were talking about with the um, yeah, Secret Wars, like I want to be able to connect with these other characters from these other multiverses and really feel stakes for not just our guys at 616. Um but yeah, that's my that's my only cool. that's my only gripe if I if you call it a gripe. Yeah. I mean, I will say we've already gotten the Peters, you know, mm-hmm. the various Peter Parkers. Um but phase five, yep, five that we're in right now ends next year. It's a pretty short phase. Yeah. Like it ends with Blade. And so we also still have phase six before well, leading into the King Dynasty. It ends next year? That's a quick phase. Very. I did not even realize well, how quick. I mean, I mean, you got shows and, and, and movies, and apparently a Spider-Man six movies. in between that. 
So, and that's about the same as phase one. So wow. Phase one was five. Iron Man one, two. The, the, uh, the intros Hulk. for Thor and Cap. Or oh, and Hulk. Captain America and Thor and Avengers. So, yeah, six moves. Yeah, yeah. So Maybe, this is cause... Ant-Man, Guardians, the Marvels, Captain America, Thunderbolts, and Blade. Interesting. If that apparently it's Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, yeah, apparently Spider-Man, too. Apparently right. Spider-Man they just announced that. There, that Spider-Man rumor has not been picked up by anybody else yet, so I don't know if I believe I've that. I've seen it all over Twitter, um, but I, I don't know. It may, I don't know. I've seen it from any of my lot of channels. Sp- speaking, I don't know. Maybe I could save. Yeah, you share some pretty shady stuff here. Let me save that. <laughs> I'll save my. I'll save it for this question. State of the MCU. Well, that's what I'm talking right. about. Oh, like, okay. You, well, you said phase, we were talking about Phase Four, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of reports, and I don't believe this report. I don't. Believe, you know, I usually have. I'm the rumor Twitter guy, um, in the group chat, and I think always all the rumors. <laughs> and I'm. I say I'm kind of. You know, from what I send is kind of like. 60, 40, like 60% right, 40% wrong. Um, what I do think is wrong, which I've been seeing a lot, is that Spider-Man is going to lead this team, lead a team in Kang Dynasty. No. He, he, uh, look, un- unless, unless, then the only way for that to happen is that, uh, I, I, feel, I don't know. I don't see it happening. I feel like that'd be uh, more of uh, Captain America, New Cap, um, Sam, like I think that would make more sense, um, but I don't think that's. I'm seeing it a lot. He, when I say he, guys, I'm, when I say I'm, I'm seeing it a lot, I'm he, seeing it from trusted pages that have predicted he's a gonna, lot of good he's things. He's going to be a little bit older, I think. It, it, Way it, more mature. I, like he's going to have to go through yeah. some shit because otherwise, I think. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! He's been through some shit. I mean, bro. that's the thing. He lost his uncle. He lost his that's uncle. That's the thing. He lost Peter his one. Friends. He lost Peter. No, he lost Peter two. He lost his Peter fr- three. His girlfriend. He lost his love his of his best life. Friend. He lost his best friend. He lost Doctor Strange. He lost the Wizard Man. So that's what I'm saying. A lot of people <laughs> believe, don't remember him. A lot of people believe this. Well, not believe this. Like, or I would say, there's it's gaining traction because he's been through so much, and we expect him. Okay, so we're not expecting the high school happy Peter. We're expecting the Spider-Man four to take Spider-Man three, Spider-Man. Yeah, you know, like a darker turn, like where he might have to deal with a symbiote or even more death, or you know, like by himself in a sense. You know, so that's why they're saying like he will be. I don't want to say the most matured Avenger, but I mean at least one of them. The most depressed for sure. Yeah, I, I think I'm not again. If, if he's older, like obviously we saw in especially uh, Civil War, mm-hmm. he, he he can take some responsibilities and stuff. But yeah. I don't. You have you have the new Cap. You have Captain Marvel, um, and Captain Marvel's never here. No, but wait, side note about Captain Marvel. She wasn't on Earth when that spell was cast. She'll remember Peter no, Parker. So is there, Thor. There's a few Thor, members that Thor should in remember that. too. Yeah. yeah, and maybe. Uh, but did Nick Thor Fury. ever know that he was Peter Parker? Solid point. I mean, yeah. I just remember remember Captain Marvel Marvel sign of Hi, Peter Parker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Speaking of Spider Man, Spider Man across the Spider Verse, yeah. June second. Uh, I don't have much to say about it because the trailer doesn't actually reveal that much. All I gotta say is I'm excited about it. Funko Pops are so cool. <laughs> oh my god, they made a lot. They made a lot. Like they got Punk Spider Man, they got Spider Woman, they got Miles, they got 2099. And I'm sure like once the movie comes out, they'll probably make a lot, well when it gets close, they'll probably put a lot more out. But I like the Spideys. I, I'm adding it to my collection. There are so many. There's like a Mary Jane and. Uh, Annie Parker from the Renew Your Vows universe. Like, I'm super excited. It's there's so cool. so many. Yeah. I wonder how... Yeah, there's just so many. So many. This is only the part one of it, so... It's, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. All right, let's move along. Uh, went a little long there with uh, with Guardians. Uh, let's talk about DC. Let's talk about Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which comes out this month, March 17th. Um, I'm having a hard time getting excited for this. I'm just not. I guess maybe it's a mixture of... <laughs> Shazam one was fine. Yeah, it was fun, but like it wasn't like anything to write home about. And then we got the new DC thing going forward, so it's kind of like we're in this lame duck season where it's like 
does any of this matter? And so I didn't watch it. I didn't watch the first one. <sighs> Your last, the only thing when I when I think about Shazam is that last shot of Superman's right half of his body being in, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And now that's down the drain. Now so, that's down the drain. God. Hey, hey, it was a stunt double anyway. Yeah, I know. I, know I mean, that, that's the only have... thing I remember. Like could've from that movie, though. honestly, like, it could have been something. It's Justin. the only Look, scene it from the movie I've had seen. Been something <laughs> we could have had Henry. We could. He could have been in. He was there for Black Adam. He wanted to be there. Okay, I think that's funny. I think that's. Oh, I man. heard Black Adam was trash. It was June sixteenth. Uh, we have <laughs> the Flash. Sorry, <laughs> did we get to talk about Black Adam? No, because I didn't want to. We never. We, we never, never did. did. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we didn't Wait, talk about so it. Like, no. sidebar. No. Can, we, can we get a 30 second Black Adam feeling from YouTube? Bad, you've seen bad, it? bad, bad, bad. <laughs> very bland, very not driven. <laughs> Fights were cool, but other than that, bland. I like, like Dr. Fate. The Dr. Fate was cool. Like, Dr. Oh, Fate? That was like, my favorite was part. Cool. I, I will say that Justice Society was probably my favorite thing about the whole movie. Yes, that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, Adam Man was, <coughs> that's his name, right? Adam Man? Uh, Adam Smasher. Adam, yeah, Adam Smasher. Smasher. Pointless. 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 Man, he's such a nuanced character. Of course, they made him pointless. I mean, see, still, that's the problem with pointless. that version of DC. They're like great character, bland, sucks, yeah. lame, the worst. Black Adam should never be bland. Black Adam is almost like the Doctor Doom of DC in a and way. The CGI Just was less great. Smart. The CGI was great. Yeah, I give him that. The CGI was really great. Yeah. All right, moving along because I don't want to spend any more time with Black Adam. Uh, <laughs> June sixteenth, The Flash. <laughs> Um, it seems to be following Flashpoint, minus the whole, like, Amazon Atlantean War thing and Thomas Wayne thing. Um, but, and, and, of course, I obviously no Superman thing. But, yeah, it's Flashpoint. Um, yeah, it's, 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 the trailer, uh, <laughs> it looks great. The trailer looked great. Um, I thought it was cool to see Michael Keaton's Batman do stuff that he couldn't do in the time that those movies are being made. Like, you know. But can he turn his head, though? Because I don't it did know. Not look like I it. don't know. I he don't still, know. He still did the full, he full torso look up. <laughs> landed and you know started throwing people around. I thought it was cool to see. I thought it was cool to see that. He, anything coming from above, he he's done. Yeah, he, you won't see it coming. Yeah, won't see it coming. Oh man, that that like I mean I'm excited to see him too. Like yeah, y'all know my hate for the DC movies, but I'm gonna watch that because Michael Keaton. Yeah, Michael Keaton as Batman. Yes. Okay, are, are we disappointed though? Like that, unless they haven't just shown it yet, that we're not going to be getting Thomas Wayne in this? Uh, no, absolutely not. Because if we got a Thomas Wayne, it would probably be Jeffrey Dean Morgan who did play Thomas Wayne in the scene in Batman v Superman, mm. which I would not be against as a Batman. But. It's so loosely following the Flashpoint storyline that I think that, and the Flashpoint storyline is chaos. Right. Like I don't think that I don't think that it's this necessary. Is a, like this is very loose adaptation from what I'm feeling here. Oh yeah, like we have two Barry Allens. Like that's already yeah deviating. We have a Supergirl. We've got Zod's invasion still happening. I wonder what's um, in it. But I mean, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'll watch it. It's probably gonna suck, but you know. I honestly at least it'll look pretty. You know, I yeah. honestly don't think this movie will suck. I think this will be honest I'm a bold prediction, okay? Bold prediction. I think we everybody will enjoy this movie. We will see. Everybody friend. that's going to be it's going to be the best movie for the DCEU cuz it is yes. it. Yes. <laughs> I, I I think along those but along those lines, but yeah, I think it will be I think it will be good. All right. Here's hoping. Let's move forward to, I think, our last bit of uh, uh, previews, and that is, we briefly touched about it, Mandalorian Season 3 airs tomorrow, release date today, I guess, if you're, as you're listening to this. Yeah. Um, here's the synopsis, uh, or no, excuse me, here is a description uh, about uh, Grogu. So, here, here's what I'll say. If you liked The Mandalorian, and you want to... Not be confused, unless they do like a review, which they uh, might sure. um, at the beginning of season but three. They will. 
Uh, you should probably go check out episode, what was it, five and six of uh, Boba Fett, something along those lines. Like yeah. completely all they of They actually <laughs> on Disney Plus already have like a little category for the Mandalorian where it'll direct you to your relevant episodes. Yeah, that's funny. That's really good. That's good Here's this whole episode of Boba Fett that is Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah. Save the series. Um, so if you did watch that, Boba Fett, you will realize that um, it, it to me, anyways, in, in that scene it felt like Grogu wasn't there that long but there's some clarification from John Favreau showrunner he says he Grogu is somebody who has spent time in both worlds we know that he started off earlier in the Jedi Temple we've seen flashbacks that speak to that and then we know that he's been rescued and spent many years with the Mandalorian uh, that was kind of news to me too I didn't realize it was like years um, he went back with Luke Skywalker uh, now that we've been two years apart from him, their training, Favreau revealed. What's interesting is that he is choosing, he, he chooses his friend, the Mandalorian, because he's developed an attachment. It's interesting how he, uh, how that echoes, in a way, Luke's path when he was drawn to the attachment of his friends and how that helped shape the future. So essentially, he was, he was there for a while with Luke. Like, I did not catch I that. that. I thought it was like a month or two. <laughs> that was like a couple months. Well, yeah, a few months at that. Like, yeah. it, it did not feel like a long time. Um, and so that sheds a new light. And maybe, like, they've just been doing that in the whole show. I just haven't been realizing it. Yeah. Um, but they've definitely been s- pushing time very fast yeah. without us realizing yeah. it. Time works differently. Um, I, I think guess. that we're going to we're gonna go into uh, a little bit of, like, I think they'll offer some clarification to that timeline. Because, I mean, thus far, the events of the first two seasons all occur within a very short period of time of like a couple months, realistically. Well, that's no, no, that's, that's what he was saying here. He, he spent many years with the Mandalorian. But yeah, I'm saying like, have we had a time come since then? Or is that years? Oh, is Favreau misspeaking, you know, like oh, he maybe. said years, but like he may have been like, oh, it's been a bunch of time, but like not really necessarily thinking about the actual yeah. timeline. Yeah. Good, good. Solid point. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, either way, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be really great to be back on Mandalore, mm-hmm. uh, especially now, first time live action. Um, I'm excited. I'm just, also, Katie Sackhoff, give me more Katie God, Sackhoff. Yes, nonstop. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also, shout out Battlestar Galactica, best TV show of all time. <laughs> I can't speak for that, but I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. down for her. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you not seen it? No, my friend. No, my no. friend. Retweet. Star far it's Star Far. Star Wars is as like far as with sci fi that I'll I'll go. Yeah, not even Star Trek. Bro. Bro. I need you to I need I need to all the listeners and to, to all the all the hosts. I thought you were about to Chris, say hose. If you listen to this, this goes for you too. <laughs> like, I need y'all to understand the Battlestar Galactic reboot was the best sci-fi related property that has existed ever look look i'm sure you're right End story but dude I, look i'm here to tell you it's not even that long it's not a commitment it's four seasons and if you don't watch it you're a terrible human being What's, what is it on <laughs> who knows look i look i have no idea for me for me it's come down <laughs> I, to i have it for me it's come down it. production like sci-fi shows i i barely ever Same touch here. men Lauren, the only reason probably well other than Star, Star Wars. Wars, it's it's got high production. Yeah, and so look, I'm not saying that's not good. High production for its day. I believe you, but bro, you, it's rough, man. It's rough. It's rough like, it's rough. Like I, I, it's it's so good. It's like Doctor like, Who. You will, I guarantee <laughs> you, watch, 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 watch the miniseries that aired before before the show, and if you aren't sucked in, money back guarantee. Okay, I'll buy you a beer. Did, all right. right, buy me a. Uh... No, I don't want a beer. <laughs> all right, guys. We are not buying you a beer to too. Buy me something else. Justin yells at us even more. Yeah. <laughs> Let's end this thing. Thank you all again for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave a rating on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at, at Always More Pod. Justin, where can we find you on the interwebs? I am everywhere as Justin is theory. That was cool. All right, Jordan. I am everywhere at Jordan CRTV. And you can find me pretty much everywhere at, at Timothy Lichty. That's L-I-E-C-H-T-Y. Thank you again for listening and for being a part of the conversation. And remember, there's always more than this. See you nerds later. Bye. Bye. Bye.
wait a really long time to say bye, or was that just a super big delay? <laughs> Probably a little bit of both. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs>